Kashifu Inua, the Director General National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, has advised Nigerian youth to develop their digital skills to support government's efforts towards building the digital economy. The DG gave the advice during an online interactive session with Nigerian youth on the topic Education, Employment and Technology in Nigeria, Gaps and Opportunities Post-COVID-19 Pandemic. The meeting was organized by Global Shapers Community, an international non-governmental organization which specializes in outsourcing talents, creating jobs, and building careers. The Nice Dabos said that the developing digital skills would help them be self-reliant post-COVID-19 era. He said the outbreak of the novel coronavirus has been a monumental disaster globally, Nigeria inclusive, and has led to unprecedented disruptions to global economy, sharp drop in global crude oil prices as well. And joining us to discuss this is Ido Akinde, who's a technology team coach. Good evening, Mr. Akinde. Good evening, and thank you for having me today. Thank you for joining us this evening. Now, information technology is such a vast space. Are there specific skills young people should focus on, especially in this COVID-19 era? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, in fact, I like to refer to this COVID-19 era as a blessing in disguise for many youth in, Af in Nigeria, Africa, and by extension, the developing world. Why do I say so? Um, the record numbers and rates of unemployment that we have seen in the Western societies who have never had double-digit unemployment figures uh, tells us that has, has created some kind of level playing field. What has happened is that immediately after this um, jobs employment slump subsides, there's going to be more of people in those economies looking out for people to refill those jobs that they have let go while the uh, pandemic was on. What that means is that whereas uh, before now, it was difficult for Nigerians to monetize the skills that they have at global rates, immediately after the pandemic, anybody who has digital skills can become a global worker you mm. can you without necessarily relocating you can be in nigeria and you can be a data scientist you can be a blockchain engineer you can be an ai specialist you can be all sorts of things to answer your question specifically yes there are a number of tools a number of skills that can be acquired i'm looking at a a linkedin research report now mm -hmm. uh, can i share my screen with you do you mind yeah, please go ahead. Um, even though the, the network isn't great, so we've switched to phone, okay. but let's see what we can do. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. All the same, um, um, I'm looking at that report now, and the top, the top 10 skills uh, that employers need, that companies need in 2020, out of, out of the top 10, seven of them are IT skills. And let me list them out. Number one is blockchain. Number two is cloud computing. Number three, analytical reasoning. Number four, artificial intelligence. Number five, UX design, business analysis, sales, scientific computing, and video production. Now, what that means is that this is the IT age. As we have all been ushered into this era of Zoom and video conferencing and social distancing and you know heightened technology usage, immediately after this pandemic goes away, you know, if I can use that term, mm. those skills that people have, uh, those, those skills and habits that people have formed around the usage of technology are not going to go away. So, yes, there are skills, you know, there are, there are, there are and, uh, and some of us have been preaching this gospel for quite a while. Yes, there are hard skills, hard technical skills that people can, that people can leverage. Can I give you a tip? It's something to, something to close that question. In 2019, India, recorded a total of 150 billion US dollars in total revenue, total foreign exchange revenue right. from just IT alone, IT outsourcing. What that means is that the net, the net revenue generated by Indian professionals who were serving foreign companies from within India was $150 billion. Mm -hmm. If you go to India and you compare India's society and, and you know, pretty much everything with Nigeria, 
we are power apart, you know, so people use that, you know, to compare a lot. There's absolutely no reason why we can't do that today. And some of us have mentioned this gospel for quite a while. Mm. So that's that's my answer to your question. Yes, All there right. are specific skills, blockchain, AI, um, All uh, right. data now, science. With skills <laughs> acquisition, uh, uh, Mr. Kinte, if you can hear me, with skills acquisition uh, comes training. And internet pe penetration is still a challenge in Nigeria. You would agree to that, especially as virtual training mm -hmm. has become important. Mm -hmm. How do we navigate this? Okay, so, so that's a big challenge. Um, I recently concluded a three-day, three-day, full-day, eight-hour-per-day training for one of our banks, you know, and it was remote. I, I conducted the training over Zoom, you know, and I understand very intimately what the challenges are that we face here, both for the facilitator and the myriad people that are connecting from different places. Mm. I'm also privy to some of the challenges of the ICT infrastructure space, AKA the people that provide us internet, okay? The real problem actually, be, uh, uh, if, you, if you move closer to them, the real problem actually is not with the supply side, okay? So, so there are a number of back-end providers, you know, the main ones and co, who have, who have recently brought in huge fiber optic cables, some of them subsea, and are bringing a huge bandwidth of data into the country. The problem lies between those back-end providers mm -hmm. and what you might call the infrastructure needed to, to, to transform that back-end to what you and I will consume via our modems and our mobile phones. So this is, of course, uh, um, this is another opportunity to call on the federal government or, you know, you know just to call on the government and other private sector participants mm. to please invest in that space. So yes, a lot of investments has gone into providing that back-end. Many people now have cables that are bringing us huge fiber broadband at the back end. But, the, but, but that huge capacity is not getting to you and I, and that's why we're still experiencing this. Yeah. So we need people to invest in that space, that gap. Right. And then that's when we will have better experiences. Right now we have the facility to, to enjoy better experiences, but we don't have, but there's a gap between those of us who are consuming the services and the back-end people who are providing those services. It's interesting how you mentioned there uh, what revenue India is making from IT. Now, how can the government use the IT space in Nigeria to drive up revenue, especially as the crude oil market you know, has crashed? I feel very passionate about this question, uh, this, this topic that, you, that we're about to talk about. And I feel so passionate about it that I don't even think that it is big. Just, I don't think that we should do this just because oil prices have slumped. I think we should do this because this is our opportunity for survival. I think Nigeria should pay attention to using ICT technology skills, ICT skills to revamp this economy as a golden opportunity to revive and you know survive out of this pandemic. Hmm. Okay, and I'll explain. Uh, using the India reference as one template. If you think about it, the average Nigerian youth is technology savvy, okay? Yes, not everybody is tech uh, savvy to the extent of wanting or uh, having the mental faculties to be a programmer, okay, which is high in demand. But there are nowadays many ancillary roles, professions, and disciplines that support programming work. There, are, there are, for instance, there's QA quality assurance and testing. There are people that uh, provide services around product management and project management. We, who earn sometimes very close to what the developers and the core technical people earn. What I'm saying is that the Nigerian elite, the Nigerian government, the, the Nigerian celebrities, quote unquote, sector or space can come together and galvanize the youth who are largely unemployed, and many of them have mobile phones and they have technology skills that are in it, okay, mm. because they grew up in the technology generation. We'll wrap it there. Yeah. Mr. Akinde, I'm very sorry, but uh, that's how all that we can take in the interest of time. Thank you so very much. We'll bring you again to have uh, more conversation on this passionate uh, topic. Thank you, and right. do keep safe out there too. Thank you very much.